Good morning, everyone. Looks like we've got a lot of people in the chat already. This is pretty awesome. In today's live stream, I'm going to talk about ways to get started with hand lettering and do some sort of like beginner exercises and things that you can do to make your hand lettering better if you're already doing hand lettering or just ways to like start experimenting with it without feeling too overwhelmed. I figured I would do this by lettering commenters' names since that's a very popular thing, but I will do it to sort of demonstrate specific ways that you can start lettering. So thank you all for joining in. I'm very glad to see that there's some people here. I've been pretty bad about promoting these things because I've had a hectic schedule lately, but I'm glad that some of you are seeing this. Uh, nice to see you in the comments, Pinky Green, Diana Lisa, great to see you as always. Jimmy D Rock, nice to see you. Guagster, awesome. So many familiar names here. Crummy Doodles, Jenna Haas. Uh, you said you're finally able to catch a live stream. That's awesome. Uh, so glad to see everyone here. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess I don't have <laughs> too much else to say besides uh, we should just switch over to my iPod. Eh, iPad, not an iPod. I'm not going to draw on an iPod here. This is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, hopefully the sound is good this week. We've been struggling with it, and I think it actually looks like it's close to peaking, so I'm going to turn it down just a tiny bit, or maybe I just need to take my excitement level down a little bit, but hopefully... Hopefully the sound is good. It sounds like it's okay in my headphones. So I put this in the description, but how I'm going to do this is I'm going to use uh, commenters' names to demonstrate these techniques. And I'm going to just start from the top, like as a first come first serve thing. But if you really, really want to cut the line, um, you can do that with a $10 plus super chat, but no pressure there. I'm happy to use the comments, first come, first serve. I just like to make that an option because I know some people have been really trying and want to get their name drawn. This one will be a little different because it won't be as sort of, uh, I don't know, because I'm going to be demonstrating different techniques. So it'll be a little different. So let's just get into it. Let me switch over to my iPad. All right, I got my iPad here. I'm gonna switch over to, let me just move my mic a little bit out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to a pencil brush and I'm going to put on my glove because that is a very helpful thing to do when I'm drawing. All right. So let's see, I'm gonna to go to the top. The first commenter is Pinky Green. And it looks like you are saying that your name is Rayanna or something like that. And um, I guess that's what I will be drawing. So I'm just gonna quickly write this down so that I can move the chat back down to the bottom so I can see what's going on. So R A E. And, oh, no, no. I already messed it up. R-A-E-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Okay. Okay, okay. Sorry, I am... Let me just uh, give you a little background why I'm a little flustered. About five minutes before I was supposed to go live, all of a sudden, my mic wasn't working, and... As you know. Oh my god, I just turned it off. Okay. <laughs> uh, audio has been the bane of my existence. So all of a sudden, my mic wasn't working right when I was about to go live. And I'm like running around trying to unplug the cord, plug it back in. I uninstalled the software for this new mic and then reinstalled it. Turns out there's just a mute button at the top that I accidentally hit. 
And that was why it wasn't working. So that was uh, silly. <laughs> okay, so the most basic tip that I have for getting started with lettering is to just sort of use very simple letters, just like capital plain letters as a sort of a structure that you can build upon. So for example, just like this, but we'll do it a little bit neater. So I'm going to do a new layer and I'm just going to write this out as simply as I can in just big, simple letters like this. So now that we have this, what we'll do is we'll just bring down the opacity. So we have this as just like an underlying structure. And then what you can do is draw on top of these letters to sort of make some interesting shapes and just sort of give them some more style. And having this underlying structure will help to make sure that, you know, you are following like the overall shapes and it just kind of gives you this sort of thing that you can lean on to. So the simplest thing you can do is to make some just like really bold blocky letters. And this is sort of just like making an outline, almost like building a wall around the letters like this. And then you can start to like play around with overlapping them because you have that underlying structure so you can see where it is. And you're just sort of like building this almost like building a, just like a little force field around those letter structures. And obviously this is like the most basic thing you can do, but there's a lot of different things you can do like this. So if we have this, all right, okay, that's cool. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. So we could duplicate this layer and then turn down the opacity on one of them and then just like drag this over like that. So we've got that opacity down low so we can still see it. And then we can come back to our top layer and we could do like a 3D effect like this. So you would just sort of draw lines connecting the points uh, of the same letter like this. Just do this quickly, and then we could do like a, a tighter version of this afterwards. And then you would just draw these lines in. And then you've got this kind of fun, bold 3D effect without really trying too much. So let's, um, let's turn that off for a second. Let's say we wanna try something different with, um, maybe you don't wanna do blocky letters like that. Maybe you wanna do something a little bit more fun and playful. So you could just do some like wiggly organic shapes like this and then just still using that underlying shape. So you're just drawing this like wiggly line around the outside and then you don't have to really think about drawing the letters because you already know you're just using those original simple shapes. So you can just sort of play around drawing these outlines and get some sort of cool effects. You could do like a like crazy like I don't I don't even know like electric lightning letters or something like that, and you don't have to just do it straightforward like this. Let's say you want it to be a little bit more uh, I don't know dynamic. You want to change it in scale. You could play around with the transform options. So let's say we go into here, we could do like a perspective thing, do something like this. I don't know, let's, you can go like that. We could try the, um, the liquify too. So you could do like this warp thing where you can make like a, curve situation. Let 
make this brush a little smaller. So I can kind of, oh, well, there we go. And it doesn't have to look good here because we're just using this as a framework. So we turn down that opacity. And now we could do that like same thing we were doing before where we draw around these letters, but now we've got this sort of dynamic curve happening. And obviously these are super rough, but you can use these as like a starting point for a uh, different letter style. Hold on, I'm getting lost here in my files. So let's say we wanted to go forward with something like this. Actually, let's take this as a, let's use this and then come into the uh, transform options and we could do like a little distort thing and just make this a little bit more sort of 3D. Sometimes I like to try uh, different ways to, to use these, um, the different options between the distort and the skew. Cause sometimes I think the perspective on its own uh, locks it in too much. So we could come in here with the uh, vector brushes. Let me actually just get a bigger brush size. So I'm going to do the uh, vector trimming here to get these nice sharp lines. Doing like the 3D letters like this work really well with the vector trimming because you can draw the lines through them. What do we do here? Sometimes if you don't fully go through a line, like this one right here, it's getting cut off because this line doesn't fully inter intersect. So all you need to do is come back in and like pull the rest of that line through. And now when we go like that, we can, oh, there we go. Whew. Um, all right, let me, uh, Let me check out the comments real quick. I feel like I've been neglecting you all. <laughs> uh, Guagster, you said, could you please letter my nickname, which is the same as my YouTube channel, Guagster? Uh, probably. Yeah, oh yeah, you are uh, second in the chat. So um, let me just do this little uh, random lettering real quick, and then we will move on to Guagster. Uh, illustrating MU or MU. Is it MU or MU? Because I ask every time and maybe you've told me and I forget. So, uh, Pinky Green, you said perfect pronunciation. Oh, nice. I nailed it. Okay. All right. So, again, the cool thing about this vector trimming when you're doing letters that overlap like this is you can just draw right through the other letters to make sure that you get the, the structure that you want and like the the overall shape without having to like guess on where the line starts and ends. Cause then you could just like X out what you don't need. So I'm not completely following my sketch cause I'm using it as like a starting point, but what things I'm paying attention to is like, because I want there to be some variety in like the letters shifting up and down. So it's not perfect. I'm trying to make sure that they're not, like this line where the bottom of the E is would be too close to the bottom of the A for like the sort of playfulness that I'm going for. So what I'm going to do is like shift that line up a little bit so that they're not exactly the same. And then I can sort of use that as the top part of that E. And then maybe I'll pull this one up at little, a little bit more of an angle. 
to just give it a little bit of character, a little bit more imperfection. Okay, so I think sometimes I'll like stop midway and do some trimming because it can get a little chaotic looking. And sometimes that's okay for me, but um, I don't want it to look too confusing. And the cool thing about this is it's, you know, it's vector artwork, so it's like infinitely scalable. All right, so I think I'm going to put this A on a little bit more of an angle. So like these these sketches and like the structure that we're doing, it's like a good starting point, but you don't have to like follow everything exactly. You can just kind of experiment and see what works. I like the way that they're sort of uh, starting to angle a little bit, so I'm going to lean into that. Maybe I'll make the second N angle a little bit more. So I think I don't want these to um, line up perfectly like before. So what I'll do here is maybe make this the top of that N a little bit taller. And then look like that. So you can get a little confusing with all like the, when you're drawing through all the lines. And let's just get this A in. So I think what we need to do for the A is make it a little bit smaller and shift it out a little bit. So I'm just gonna grab my sketch and just move it over a little bit. And then I'm just gonna just make it the size that I think I want it to be. Maybe rotate it a little bit like that. Okay. I need to adjust my mic. I'm realizing I'm like stretching to look over the top of it and uh, it's like stressing me out and making me uh, not in the zone. I'm like getting distracted by my uncomfortable position. All right, let's... Let's get rid of all this mess. Let's do some letter weed whacking. I'm also not used to wearing uh, headphones when I live stream and it's like just isolating my voice in my ears. And that's uh, a little unnerving to me, to be honest. But I want to make sure the sound is good for you guys. There needs to be an option for live streams where like the audience can talk somehow so that I can have a conversation with you guys and not just feel like I'm talking to myself alone in my studio, which I guess technically I am. <laughs> All right. I think we just, yeah, that's not going to work. Okay. So. What I'm going to do here is just draw a line through the top like this. And now I can use that to trim off this excess stuff. Okay, so we can uh, not turn everything off. Sometimes you got to remember to uncheck your modifier button because it changes the way things work. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this layer just like we did before to get that like 3D look. I'm going to shift it down. And another trick that you can do instead of just making it, just moving it down, you could also like scale it, make it smaller to like make the angle more dramatic. And I'm going to bring down the opacity so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to make a new layer to do this because sometimes it's a little bit easier um, if you need to do some cleanup after the fact. So really all you're doing is drawing lines to connect 
the same points on the letter. So like the bottom right corner of this A to the bottom right corner of the A. So then we'll do the same thing with this one. And then the N. And you'll get to a point where you don't even really need to uh, to like draw these lines. You can sort of just, you just know where they're going to go. But when you're starting out, this is really helpful to like get the angles right. Looks like I missed the E. Whoops. So I think what I'm going to do is just extend this line down to just clean it up a little bit so there's not that weird little notch. Okay, so you could do the same thing here where you like connect those all the way down. I guess I'll just do that for to make it less confusing. And like this one, I'm not even going to bother because it's going to end right there to close that off. And here I'm just going to like eyeball it because, you know, you, it's only going to cover this little triangle. So you can just go like that. Okay, great. So a little trick to get rid of what you don't want on the the layer below is to go on your main lettering layer and grab the magic wand tool and then just select inside your letters like this and then we can click onto this layer and then hit erase and then we could do the same thing on these lines erase can turn back up the opacity on that lower layer and we could just merge this all down grab the paint bucket and then just fill in this stuff and find a couple areas that I missed. Man, I didn't realize how loud the uh, creaking of the floor from upstairs when someone's walking around is. So I apologize if you can hear that. Okay, at this point, I find it easier to just switch back to the brush, especially because there's a couple areas I'm going to have to fix. Like that. So sometimes I'll just uh, come through all the way like that, and like fix this little spot here. And then what I'll do is just use the eraser to uh, just flatten out those edges, clean up any overshots. Uh, cool. So that's super simple way to use a, a block letters as like a structure. And again, this is a vector artwork, so it's infinitely scalable. We could zoom in forever and it would be completely perfect. You could print this a hundred feet tall and it would be impeccable, perfect quality. Oh, right. Uh, Drusilla, you said the volume today is perfecta. That is so good to hear because audio has been a struggle. Hey, Kenan, Blading on the Brain. Good morning from Cali. Nice to see you. Uh, Eric Prada, nice to see you. Uh, Filiberto Nunes, you said your mic sounds really good now compared to previous lives. Thank you. I did upgrade before the last live stream 
And then on the last live stream, there was still a little bit of troubleshooting, getting it all dialed in. Uh, Lynn's illustration. <laughs> Apologize for that pronunciation, but you said in Discord you can talk with the viewer. Oh, I need to do that more. So you can do video in Discord? I'm not the best at uh, Discord. I need to get better about it. Uh, can you hear me? I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for how I pronounced that. Uh, hello from Brazil. So nice to have you here. So next is uh, Guagster and let me uh, switch back to my pencil brush and what did we do? I didn't get the pencil. Okay. G W O G S T R. I guess I know how, how to spell that, but just to be sure. Okay, so let's see. Um, Filiberto Nunes, he says, have you heard of when Fresco will have exporting in SVG? I have not, but I'm hoping soon. Okay, so um, let's do, let's talk about using a combination of letter framework and curved baselines for Glogster. I think this will be good for this one because it's a one word situation. So for this, what I'm going to do is draw like a curved line, just a wiggly little line like that. And then I'm going to draw another line that's similar in curve, but maybe comes down more like that. And this is going to let us get some like sort of trippy psychedelic vibes, like a old seventies rock poster. So we're going to turn down the opacity on this and we're going to use this as like an overall structure. So what you can do is either just start writing the words in there, but what I think is helpful when you're starting out is to just draw like a, a rectangle, just using lines to block out your letters. So if we go up here, we see Guagster has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight letters. So let's come up here and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, let me just double check because it's confusing. So G W O G S T E. And then we just need one more. Okay. So that's fine. We'll just go like this. And sometimes I'll do another version where I will adjust the spacing a little bit because you can make some cool effects by playing up like the curve to like give it some 3D, like, I don't know, some like depth. So if you think about this as like a, a shape, like maybe this part is like coming up towards us and then this is going back in space. So then if that was the case, maybe this first letter would be a little bit bigger then this one would come here, but then these would get a little bit thinner as they're kind of going backwards. And then as it starts to curve back this way, maybe they would start to get a little bit bigger. So it would be a, a subtle adjustment, but it might make a difference. So let's just uh, confirm that we have the right amount of letters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, cool. So let's use this as our new starting point. So I'm going to merge those together, turn down the opacity. And now I'm just going to simply write the letters as simply as possible, just block letters using the space that like the overall shape. And this again is just a framework that we can use to help us fit everything in. And the point of this is that you have like a structure. 
so you don't like run out of space. Like if you just started, like if we just went straight to like this and then just started writing in the letters, you might get here and be like, oh, I ran out of space. And then you like, or you're just like trying to like squeeze them in at the end. So this el eliminates that process by just, um, by giving us this framework to start with. Okay, so let's delete that. Let's turn this down. And now we have this overall structure that is just a little a little guide. So I'm gonna just rotate it a little bit to give it a little bit more style. And now we can come in here and just draw on top of it. And we can do sort of that same thing we did before where we just like draw an overall shape around it if we wanted to do that. If we wanted to do those like overlapping letters, we could do that as well. I'll probably do this in a couple different ways in the sketch stage, keeping things loose, but just playing around with style. So then if we turn down that, you can see that looks pretty cool, but maybe we can try something different. We can get a little bit more adventurous if we wanted to. Let's see. Maybe we want to do some like lean into that sort of trippy look. Maybe do some like wiggly letters and we can just draw wiggly lines, but then just look at that underlying structure to sort of help us make sure that we are getting that shape. So if we're doing this like wiggly shape, maybe we do the next line and just have it follow the wiggles from that first letter so that they sort of interlock, interlock together. And then one thing you want to be careful about when you're doing like an O with these wiggly lines, I guess it's more important if you're trying to do a D, you want to make sure it doesn't read like an O, but just keeping the center part right in the center for an O helps in that regard. So make sure it reads like an O still. O's are usually the easy one. It's just making sure that it doesn't end, like a D doesn't read like an O. So I'm just keeping these like wiggly lines, but starting the next one using the line from the other one. So they sort of lock together. And maybe curve the T out a little bit so it like fills in that negative space. Could do the same thing with the R, I mean the E. And then maybe we can get a little fancy with the uh, this leg of the R by following that curve up a little bit like this. Uh, cool, I think that looks pretty rad. So maybe we'll do a tightened up version of this. Mm, I think I'm gonna do this one with a, with a regular brush. So it has a little bit of texture to it to sort of go with that vintage vibe. but I'm gonna put my smoothing all the way up still so that I get these nice, clean, flowing, undulating lines. And at this point, I'm gonna like lean into making sure that these lines are nice and like aligned. Cause I, I think that looks good. So like here, I'm gonna fix this a little bit. So it matches that. So just going in and trying to make sure that I'm like following these curves as close as I can. Just to have it flow together nicely.
you may find it helpful to keep the uh, underlying sketch turned on so you have those baselines still. I think that can be helpful. Um, I'm not using them now just because I'm paying pretty close attention to these curves, but sometimes it can be helpful. Like oftentimes I'll do a new layer on top and then I'll just like draw in just the curves without the letter structure situation. So we'll go with that and then just turn that down. And then I just have that as like a, a reference as I'm drawing. And as you can see, I'll break that line a little bit, but I'm just making sure that I'm staying close to it to get that overall structure to stay the same. So for the G, it's a little tricky over here because I need this to taper in, but also get that middle bar to come across so it doesn't read like a C. I think what I'm going to do here is pull this front part out a little further, and then I'm going to fill this one in so I can see what's going on here. Um, if you double tap the modifier when you're in a pixel brush, well, you can do it with vector brush too, but it's more important with the pixel brushes. I can use this same brush as an eraser. That way the texture stays perfectly the same. Okay. So... There we go. Now it's definitely clear that it's a D and then I can just sort of modify my S a little bit to still work in the same space. And again, I'm curving back the T. If I was curving the other way, I would be careful to make it make sure it doesn't end up reading like a J, but because it's a T, we can pull it back a little bit and it doesn't compromise the legibility too much. And that sort of same thing is important when you are doing an R, uh, it can end up looking like an A if you get a little too wild, but I think having this extra extension on the tail down here really emphasizes that side of it. And also pulling this part so like the, the top part extends over helps it read as an R and not an A. So now I'll just fill in these letters and then I might go in and just erase a little bit if necessary. Let me just clean up this other stuff. So I think, um, yeah, I think this is pretty, pretty good. I don't, I think maybe I'll pull this uh, part of the W down a tiny bit. So just use the, whoops, you gotta make sure you're on the brush. And I'll use the modifier here to just pull this down a tiny bit. And I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that that looks fun. Definitely has those psychedelic vibes. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Uh, Joseph Petty, you said, 
ever do an illustration and misspell something? Uh, yes, uh, it's happened quite a few times. It hasn't happened for any client work or anything, luckily, because I'm paranoid of that happening. So I will do lots of double, triple, quadruple checking. It's also why I like to just write it out plain on, on like at the very beginning, just so I have that as a reference and I'm like double checking that. Uh, Lynn Sarah illustration. Thank you for clarifying. I think I just looked at it and put it all as one word. Now that you say that and I look at it, it's very clear, but I think I read it right after reading a name that was a little more challenging. So I tried, I assumed that yours was challenging as well. Um, so yeah, you were telling me that you can do video in discord. So I think I might have to do that soon since people can join in and talk and I would like that very much. So if you didn't know, uh, my channel has a YouTube server. Um, you can find the link in the description. So you should, uh, not a YouTube server, a Discord server. So you should join. I haven't been the best at being active, but I try to go on there at least every, if I'm being honest, every other day, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. But um, as it gets more active, I would like to be on there more often. Hold on one second. <sighs> Okay. <clears throat> uh, trees, speech, uh, I'm gonna just pop it onto the screen so I don't mispronounce your name. Um, I need to really fix the style on, uh, on my, uh, when I pop up comments. <laughs> Uh, you said, you've been using the keyboard in Fresco for a while now, and I've never had any issues with Fresco on Windows, but since yesterday, can't use the keyboard anymore. Uh, the Windows thing is, um, I don't have any experience with it, but I do know that it seems like everyone who has issues with Fresco is using Windows, which is a little bit of a bummer. But I do know that the app was like designed from the ground up with the iPad, so I think they've adapted it to Windows and had to sort of compromise a little bit in that regard. Um, but I, I'm sorry, I don't have any information for you on how to fix that. I have no experience. I actually haven't used a keyboard with Fresco before. Uh, Brian, you said, as a beginner with digital art, uh, you went into getting an iPad with the sole purpose of using Procreate. But as soon as they found your channel, I ended up giving Fresco a try and use it solely. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I think Procreate is a great app. I just think Fresco is a little bit more versatile. And uh, yeah, especially if you, um, as a professional illustrator like myself, I find it really helpful because of its the way it ties in so perfectly with the Adobe Creative Cloud. And I often have to, you know, deliver, you know, Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator files. And the fact that it's so seamless back and forth between those apps is really great. Uh, Guaxer, glad you like your type treatment. Thank you, Crummy Doodles. Uh, Trevor, glad that you made it as well. Uh, thanks, Drusilla. Um, Kenan, uh, I am using Ecamm Live to live stream. Okay, so the next would be, um, well, I'm skipping over Jimmy D and Diana Lisa because I've already done both of your names. Uh, because you are both uh, wonderful channel members. Uh, Tress Crawford, you are uh, next on the list. So let me write down your name. T-R-E-S-S. -S. Craw. Board. Look at that R. That is a nice R. <laughs> Look how bad that looks. Okay. Uh, 
Clogster, you said, have you ever painted any lettering murals? I'm thinking of creating some mock-ups of large-scale lettering. Uh, I have done um, a handful of murals in the past, and they've all incorporated lettering to some extent, just because most of my work has some lettering in it. Um, I don't love doing murals. I always think it's going to be fun, and it's very stressful for me because I feel like I'm not the best with paint. And it's like, I go through a very ugly stage in the mural where I think it's never going to come together. And then in the end, it usually, well, it has each time. Um, but it's very stressful. It's very hard. Um, and I don't love doing it. <laughs> but it's cool. So let's see. What do I want to do for this one? Let me look at what name is next to decide what will work better. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's do... Let's do some script. Why not? Uh, Blading on the Brain, Kenan, thank you so much. You said check out Back to Blading. Chris did a palm mural for him. Uh, that was a fun mural, uh, mainly because I had a friend helping me and it was indoor. Uh, I think some of the worst part about doing mural is if it's outdoor and it's hot. I did it like a um, 40 foot mural in Boston in the summer. And it was just like blazing heat and no shade. And it was brutal. Um, and it made me never want to do it again. But uh, when it's indoor and like climate controlled and, you know, that's a little bit better. Um, okay. So I'm going to do a script for Tress Crawford. So the first thing that I do when I'm going to do something script is I just simply write it out in cursive. And I ignore some of the ways that you're supposed to do capital letters. Like a T, um, to be honest, I don't even remember what an actual uppercase T looks like. It may be something like this. But there's some letters that, like, I just don't do. Like, for example, I think an uppercase G is, like, something like this. And, you know, I don't do that. Or, like, you know, an S is... I'll just sort of make what I want the letter to look like and just make it a little scripty. So, like, maybe I'll... If I was writing Sally... <laughs> I would just do regular S and do that. So I, I do whatever I want, basically. So for the T, I don't know how I'm gonna stylize it for this yet, but I'm just gonna do a regular T on an angle and then just and do the rest. So I'll make a new layer for Crawford so that I have some flexibility. Um, And at this point, let me uh, turn off this other stuff so that I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Let's confirm that I didn't spell this wrong yet. Okay, so we can delete that initial one. So script for me when I'm doing like a type treatment often involves a lot of just sort of playing around and experimenting. I like to try to find ways to connect letter forms and stuff like that. So here I'm just sort of, you know, maybe seeing how they could fit together. I like to have it feel sort of like a little tight lockup. So I'm thinking that it would be, if the words were roughly the same size, Tress could sort of tuck in there. Um, and like, maybe that would work. 
I also try to look for letters that could maybe connect to each other, like from the top to the bottom. Like maybe something with the S, but uh, I'm not really sure yet. So what I'll do now is I will just merge these together and bring down the opacity and just sort of sketch on top of this to try to find some sort of uh, situation that might work. So with a C, I like to sort of play around with doing some sort of like underlying underline like curve like that just to make it a little more fancy and then i'll think about what how far it could go where it's going to be a problem so like the f is going to come down here um and i don't want it to bump into that so that means that this c is probably going to be a little bit too long because with the c going below i'm going to sort of tuck the rest of the word into it so we don't have such a uh, an open area there so what we'll do now is like move the C in a little bit like that. And then we can try to figure out where the F is going to end up. So then that means like maybe the C can only go there. And now we can do a new layer to sort of figure out the um, the first name. So maybe the T tucks in like that. And now we've got less room now because of that, uh, where the, the F is coming in. So it's becoming an issue. So this is why there's a lot of sort of experimentation in this stage so it's like okay well what if the this is up here and like oh well, that's not good but what if maybe the c is a little fancy i don't know so there's a lot of uh finagling <laughs> at this point uh so let's see so what i keep doing often when i'm working like this is just sort of I keep sort of playing with like where things can fit and like how they can work together. Like maybe for this F we could do something like that. And maybe this S could sort of connect into it. So a little bit confusing to do this backwards but um, maybe something like this could work yeah so I think um, see this 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 is probably something that we can make we can make work. So what I'll do now is just turn down the opacity as always. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And let's just try to uh, figure out how to make this just a little bit nicer, flow together a little bit better. One thing that is helpful when you're doing script and you aren't that familiar or comfortable and you're like playing around with like moving baselines and like different angles and locking letters up is having sort of consistent angles can make it feel a little bit more cohesive. So you could just put some quick guides in where you just follow the angles for some of these letters. And, you know, you can, you could duplicate that one and like pull it in and see and you don't need it for the whole area. And you can also sort of break these lines a little bit. But just having a handful of these in there will be a good reference point. So I'll just like merge these together. And like this is sort of helpful because you can see that the angle of this F uh, it's quite a bit off from all the other letters. Like everything else seems to follow those lines a little bit, 
So this will help us get a little bit of a better, a little bit of a better overall design by having a little bit more consistency there. So let's see, where am I gonna start? So I think I'm just gonna start at the beginning here. So we'll get this C going. I think having the the Crawford as the sort of baseline for the overall structure will be helpful because the, the truss lettering sort of undulates down a little bit and the S's can come down a little bit more um, visually. So just doing that, like the F, the F and the D uh, aligning better already makes it more, um, just look a little bit cleaner. So we'll do new layer here and we'll try to make this tress lettering a little bit nicer. So I think I'm gonna start with ignoring the T because the T can fit in after the fact pretty easily. Okay, and now I can pull the T in a little bit closer. And maybe I can pull this line down a little bit like that and curve like that. And then we can just come in and uh, erase that top part off. And then I think uh, having that little um, flourish on the C will help this uh, space a little bit so there's not like a weird highlighted area. Okay, I think that is okay. So what I'll do now is just delete all this extra stuff and do a tighter version. So I think maybe I'll do uh, that textured brush again because um, I feel like it'll, this looks like it has a, a handmade look to it. So come in here. So on script, on the upstroke, you want it to be a little bit thinner than on a downstroke. That's not the downstroke. <laughs> so upstroke would be thinner, and then you push down a little bit, and then a little bit thicker on the downstroke so that it's um, sort of references how it would be made with like a calligraphy pen or a brush pen. I find that F's and B's can get confusing, and I like to just pull the line through a little bit when I'm doing an F. I think it helps it uh, look a little bit less like a, a B. So this brush is the classic anchor from Retro Supply Co. and their liner set. It's the, the brush that I use the most for my pixel-based drawing lately. Um, if you're interested, there's an affiliate link below. Again, this is in the liner set. And if you are using Adobe Fresco, um, Adobe Fresco uses Photoshop brushes. So you won't see something that says Fresco. You just grab the Photoshop brushes. I'll just make this line a little bit smoother.
Sweet. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's um, pretty fun. Uh, Shane Croak Art, uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, good morning, STRGSL. Uh, yes, this is the Elgato Wave 3 mic. All right, let's see what we're doing here. I apologize for the stomach growl that just went into the mic. <laughs> okay. So, uh, thanks, Quagster. Let's see where we're at. So, the uh, next name on the list is Crummy Doodles. I don't think that I did Crummy Doodles before. Yeah, I don't think so. So, uh, let's, uh, let's go for it. So, let me just... Let me move this over here for now. I like to keep these up for just a minute while <laughs> I'm getting started with the other ones. It makes me feel a little bit better to have uh, a few finished ones on the screen. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Um, crumb B... Crummy Doodles. Okay. What should we do for this one? Um, <laughs> All right. So let's um let's do like a I think because this is um a two word one, let's try a using a shape as a starting point. Um I think this is a fun exercise to do. So uh Tony, you said you just stumbled on my on my channel. Great work. Thank you so much. Happy to have you here. Um, let's, let's just start with, let's do a circle shape because, um, it's sort of like a donut or, um, and you have a donut in your, uh, icon. So what I'm going to do here is just, uh, draw roughly a circle and then hold to snap into a circle. And what we can do now is do that same sort of um, wavy baseline thing. So what I'm going to do is make a new layer and I'll just like maybe, yeah, we'll just do that sort of like a sideways yin yang situation so i'm going to merge this down and what we can do here is just do what we've done before but do it within this these shapes so actually i am i don't like how perfect it is up and down i think i want to emphasize the first word a little bit more and we'll rotate a little bit make it a little bit more dynamic okay that's better okay so we can break this up the same way we did before so there are six letters in crummy so we can do one two three, four. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six. Um, and then let's actually just do the, let's work out the first one first. So I think because 
of the size here, I think I want to give more space to the first letter and then the second letter, and then we can start tapering it down a little bit. Should we run out? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no. Okay. We're good. C R U M B Y. Okay. Let's delete that. And then I'm just going to erase the, um, the overlap there. Merge that down. And now for doodles, we also have, no, we have seven on this one. Okay. So we'll do, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Um, and now we'll do that same thing where we, um, adjust for the spacing. Basically just trying to have the letters in like the fat areas a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to move this one over a little bit. Okay, I think we're uh, overthinking it here. And I say we. <laughs> All right, so now we'll just uh, write the letters in. Crummy. This will be a good exercise because we've got two D's and two O's, and we're trying to fit them into weird shapes. So um, we will have to make sure that they read properly as those letters. Okay, so I think I'm gonna turn up, no, that's, Because there's a lot going on here, I try to like adjust the opacity so that I can see both the grid and the letters a little bit separately. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna try to like fit the letters into the shapes and like see if there's tricks that we can do to make it a little bit better. Uh, because this is a C and we've got this curve here, I can't help myself. So I'm going to try to pull this R up like this, just because I think it's fun. And then I'm going to pull this down just to sort of like use that space maybe. I don't know. But here I'm just sort of like being very playful in terms of like just seeing how the letters can fit into these shapes nicely. Like maybe we can curve this R. Maybe the R can do the same thing where it follows that line and this might help because as the letters get further away they get smaller so that this would be a way to uh help that happen faster by like forcing the m to be the u to be a little bit small up there then maybe we put the m up here so i think um Maybe we could, I don't know, we can, it's too early to make final decisions. <laughs> uh, so we stick the V up there and then I fit the Y in that shape. So this is a tricky one, but it's sort of helpful that we've got, um, I feel like, uh, that actually might work okay. The O's, I think we can be flexible with because we can make sure that the the hole is in the center. And then when you're doing the D, you just want to make sure that one side has like a flatter edge. And then you can exaggerate the 
curve. So it's like, this is clearly curved, but this is flat, but it still could get confusing if we centered the cutout on it. So what I like to do is just make sure that it's over to one side a little bit more, and that'll help it read like a, a D and not an O. So for the L, I'm gonna pull the bottom over, and I think that'll also help the transition from small letters to bigger letters, because we can tuck the E up like this, and then pull the S into that shape. And now we're getting somewhere. So I'm gonna turn off the underlying letters and then turn this down. And at this point, I'm gonna see if there's ways to make this work a little bit better and like maybe some interactions between the uppercase and I mean the top row and the bottom row to like see there's something we can do to make it read a little bit better. So I think some of the areas that are a little bit troublesome in terms of legibility are the the dude in doodles. I think because the spacing is a little bit off on our shapes, like this first O is pretty wide and it should be getting wider as it goes, like because it's growing this way. So I'm gonna start with that problem area. So I think this, um, I think this D shape is probably gonna be okay there. So what I'm gonna do for this is, um, try to make these get a little bit bigger as they go. And I think this there's this L can be a little bit thinner. There's some extra space here. So I'm gonna move this second D over a little bit. And now that's already looking a little bit better. Um, I think, I'm still not crazy about this first D. I think maybe we could do something like Something like that might work well. And then I think the S could use a little bit more room here. So I'm gonna shorten that up and then this can get a little bit bigger. So we're just using that same shape but pulling it over into the other area a little bit. Okay, that's already looking better. So I think this uh, crummy is getting a little crammed because of this C. But what I'm thinking is the Y could start to come over too, and then they could sort of, I don't know, we could just get a little playful maybe. So I'm thinking this Y could get a little bit more space and maybe, um, Let's see. Maybe we could do that. And now we sort of have to work backwards to like fit the other letters in. So I think this B would need to be a little bit wider. And we're going to have to like compromise the spacing on some of these others, but I think it'll be okay because we have that underlying structure to sort of show us. And we can see that this C and the R are huge. They don't need to be that big. So I think what I'll do is maybe just start this R back here and do a little bit shorter. And then this U can fit in like that. And again, we're st staying super rough in this point because we're just sort of figuring out the overall composition. 
before we sort of get it like uh before we try too hard to make it look good Uh, Nico Summer, thanks for joining in. Um, I think there's quite a few names ahead of you, so I probably won't get to yours today, but I'm going to be doing these live streams more often, so make sure that you're subscribed with the bell turned on so you know, get notified when I go on. Gogster, yeah. I don't know what my problem is with the word situation. I say it constantly for <laughs> no reason. Uh, thanks, Tony. You said love the moment you can start to see it come together. Same to me. I feel that way as well. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's let's clean up our file a little bit. Let's uh, turn off the other sketches. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we've got some more room to work with. And let's try to make this. Oh, let's not delete it. Let's. Um, try to make this into something a little bit better. Okay. So at this point, I do a little analyzing, a little looking over. And trying to see if maybe there's a better way to do some of these things. For example, maybe this R could come down and the C doesn't need to go all the way across. And at this stage, I'll start getting a little bit more playful with the letter forms, like maybe curving that you uh, in a little bit. Like that. Let's see. I think one of the issues is the negative space that's going to be left from this uh, from the C, which I'm not crazy about. So maybe let's just see what would happen. <laughs> see what I did there? Ooh, double. Let's just see if the C shouldn't curve under. Like, maybe I don't need to do that, even though it's so satisfying. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of, uh, I think that's probably going to be better like that. So maybe that will help us, too, with the D down here. Like, maybe that can... Sometimes when you're working on a bunch of different layers to like make things easier it gets uh, a little confusing okay So I'm just being a little bit more playful with the shapes here. Uh, okay, I think that this is um, in a good situation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get another, I'm going to get a circle back and I'm going to go into a I'll do this in vector. 
So let's turn down the opacity here and let's make a circle. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and just try to have it be roughly even around the sides. Like that. And I'm going to fill this in. And I'm going to turn down the opacity a little bit. And let's see. Actually, before I fill this in, I'm going to actually duplicate it. And then I'm going to come back in here, fill this in, turn down that opacity. And then what I'm going to do here is just like make this other one as a guide. I'm going to scale this down to the edges of the not exactly the edges of the letters, but like close, and then make sure it's sort of like roughly even within the circle. And then I'll turn down the opacity there. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is do the letters in white uh, knocked out of the circle. So I'm going to use a smaller brush for this because I'm going to be doing fills anyway. All right, I'm going to start with the, the D down here because I feel like it's the most difficult letter because it's like the weirdest shape. So I'm going to angle this line a little bit to accentuate the fact that it's like flat and not curved to make sure that it, since we're already like making it a little bit tricky to read as a D, um, doing that will emphasize that a little bit. And then I'm going to taper the inside a little bit and that'll help it again read more like a D. And then I'll bring this thing out to the edge of that curve. And we can trim these edges off. Yeah, and that already looks much more like AD. Okay, so I'm gonna make this O shape. And I'm curving it almost like a D, but I'm making sure it's staying very round on all the sides and making sure that the cutout is right in the center. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And I'm gonna to move to some other letters shortly. Like I don't wanna stick, I don't wanna just do all the bottom because I wanna do them in, in tandem so that they, it helps to sort of get the balance and the interaction working well. So I'm going to fill this in, just see what we're dealing with. And like that, clearly I need to make those centers a little bit bigger. So now that I know what that shape is, I can come in and try to make that C sort of wrap a little bit closer to it. And I'm sort of using that pink line on the outside to help guide the overall shape. Uh, happy September to you, Kirk. September is actually my uh, birthday month. You said the toughest thing for lettering for you is how to start. Uh, I've tried alphabet for 
practice or just get myself started. And I totally get hung up on the A. <laughs> um, did, were you here for the whole live stream? Because if you weren't, you should go back and watch the first part because I talk about, like I make it super, um, just like the simplest way to start. I actually have a video too on um, different ways to get started with lettering that I think uh, the first one is like starting with a with a font and using it as like a way to start drawing. But I think that's a would be a helpful video for you for to check out for sure. So I think what I'm going to do here is draw this full R to Y shape in one and then cut out the space in between them so that they flow together perfectly. And again, the vector trimming is really helpful when you're doing these like long flowy undulating lines because again, you can draw right through them um, and that helps to make it smooth because if you have to start like at the beginning of a curve, it's hard to immediately have it be smooth. But if I can get like a, a running start, it's uh, so much easier to get that clean, crisp shape. And then you just come in with the modifier and just erase the things that you don't need anymore. And since we're filling this in, it doesn't, it doesn't matter there. But like for this U shape, I'm starting way up above and then following that line in the R and coming over. A U is also another one that's tricky because you can end up accidentally making it look like a V if it gets too skinny at the bottom. So um, I'm a little bit concerned about that, but I'm trying to make sure that it's clearly rounded. I think you want to make sure it doesn't look like it's coming to a point down there. So for the top, I'm just going to draw a line following the, the pink line. And then I can go in there and erase what I don't need. And even with straight lines, it's helpful to go past where you need. We can pull this down. I might go all the way down here to get that B shape. And then we can just erase what we don't need after that. Slightly worried because um, sometimes if you're doing a lighter color knocked out of a dark color, you might visually need a little bit more space between the letters. Um, so we might have to make some adjustments after the fact for that, but we'll see. We're a little bit close over here. I didn't notice. Um, we'll see if it is a problem. We might need to tweak this a little bit. But we might be able to have that, that angle. We'll see. We can always fix it. And then we just need the top of this M. All right, let's... Uh, trim some of this extra stuff off that we don't need, separate the letters. We forgot this. I like that I say we forgot it. It's like you're taking some of the blame for it. <laughs> uh, Okay, 
And then we need to separate this. So you just sort of draw in the, the cut lines. Oops, accidentally switched to the eraser. Then uh, modifier, and then we can cut that out. So I'll just grab the paint bucket and fill these in, and we can see how it's looking. I think that's looking okay so far. Um, I'm just gonna fill in those because we're gonna need to redo those. And there's this little notch up here that's bugging me. Uh, Guaxer, thanks for answering questions. Thanks for joining in, Nelson. All right, so for this D shape, I think what I'm going to do is curve it up a little bit to follow the um, that the shape of the R. I'm just going to make it. Uh, a little bit thicker at the top and have a little bit more weight on the right side so that it um, doesn't end up reading like an O. Okay, so I'm gonna just draw this line from like for the edge of the E and the L, but I want it to sort of curve along the shape of the S so that they can sort of fit together nicely. And then for the top part, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna draw the line through the whole thing, sort of following that line. And then we need this line for the E that part of the E. And then the bottom of the L, I'm going to use the pink guideline. I'm like curving these lines a little bit just to give it a little bit more character. Like I don't want it to be too perfect. So I think having a little bit of curve helps in that regard. Okay, so now before I do the S, I'm going to trim off this extra stuff so I can see exactly what the space is like because it's a little confusing when you've got all this extra stuff in the way. I think I'll go ahead and fill them in too. Whoops, I forgot to trim off these pieces. And also if you are using the vector trimming, you got to make sure you get it done before you use the paint bucket. Cause once you use the paint bucket, it uh, does not work anymore. Okay. So I'm going to follow this overall shape of the S, but push it to the edge a little bit. As you can see there, I like pulled it up past the sketch a little bit just to sort of use the space a little bit better. Okay, and we can trim off this extra stuff. Okay, so let's um, let's turn off our guides, and our, we don't need the sketch anymore. We can bring up the opacity on this, and now we can sort of um, find our problem areas that we need to tweak, and then add in the counters on the O, O's. So. What I'm noticing right off the bat is that the O's are a little too close together. So I'm gonna try to just, um, 
adjust them with the transform tool. Which I think might be fine. I think the still needs a little bit more space between them. Like that. Okay, uh, now let's draw the counters on them. So I'm gonna do it on a new layer so I have a little bit more flexibility. I'll grab the black. Okay, that looks pretty good. I wanna make sure that I'm not zoomed in too far so that I can get a feel for the size of like the other counters. So there's a little bit of consistency. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so I'm happy with those counters. So instead of leaving them like this, what I'm gonna do is use the magic wand to select them and then turn those off and then go ahead and erase those from the white, that way it's a little bit cleaner and it makes it so that if I wanted to like try a different, you know, color or something on the black, I could just go like that and it would be cut out and I wouldn't have to deal with those like extra shapes on the top. So I'll put those together and then I can Move that over into our set, what we've done so far. So that's pretty good. So let's see, it's been an hour and a half. I probably should call it a day because I've got some other stuff to do. But let me just look real quick. I think I want to do one more quick one because um, I want to talk about doing some block letters because I think that's a fun way to get started with lettering. And uh, Jenna Hass has a good name for this. So, <laughs> or Jenna Hess. So I think I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm not gonna mess around with this too much. I think I'm gonna not do like a, a, a sketch or anything, really. I'm just gonna try to make this a little bit more quick and playful just to sh give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So. Jenna Hess. Okay. Uh, Crummy Doodles, you said, I love it. Really interesting to see your thought process and watch it all evolve. Thank you. So glad you like it. Um, a bunch of symbols <laughs> said, uh, the sound quality is great. What microphone are you using? Thank you so much. Uh, sound has been a struggle for me, for real. Um, I recently upgraded to the Elgato Wave 3, and it seems like it's um, made a big difference. Uh, thanks, Quaxer. You said that it was a good live stream, and thanks for doing your name. Uh, my pleasure. All right, let's um, move this up over here. Okay, so I'm going to talk about doing simple block letters. So what we're gonna do here is, let's just make some little squares. So I'm gonna make a selection. I'm going to fill that in, uh, deselect that, and I'm going to, all right, I'm gonna turn off these other things so I got some more room to play with. Okay, so we want a block for each letter. So I'm going to uh, duplicate this, then move it over. We can make sure that they're next to each other like that. And then I'm going to merge those down and duplicate it again. 
and then put those next to each other, roughly spaced the same way, and then we need uh, one more block. So what I'll do here is, actually, um, before I do that, I'm going to duplicate this for your last name, and then I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select one of the blocks and then go to copy selection, paste selection, and then just move that over there. Too close. All right, merge those together and then Maybe we'll just like a center. I want to make the uh, spacing somewhat consistent. <laughs> okay, so let's merge this down. So what we're going to do here is just try to um, carve out the letter shapes from the blocks themselves. So for example, um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab white here and let's, uh, let's start with an easy letter. So the E, all we really need to do is just go ahead and make two lines. And then we have an E. So for the N, we just do a little cut out there, a little cut out there. And you can get more uh, playful with this kind of thing. So for like the A, you could just go like that. If you wanted to like angle the tops, you could do that, but I don't think it's necessary. Then the J, you could, um, you could do something simple like that, just that one little curve, and then you've got a J. Then the H, you could just go like that, like that. I'll show you some ways to get a little bit fancier with this. So for the S, you did two lines like that. And you can get a lot more playful with this kind of thing too. Like you could, I'll just turn that off and start a fresh one. Let me bring down the size here. So let's say you wanted to make this look a little bit cooler. So you could like angle the letters. Um, I think if we do it like smaller, it'll be cooler. You could do things like that. You could like shorten that area. You could, um, We could do some more like trippy shapes, like take those same lines that we initially drew and then you get some like cool effects like that. You could, um, let's see, you could do like a sort of a curve like, like that. So you're just sort of taking the same, that's actually exactly what I did before. <laughs> uh, you could do like little notches like that. So for the, um, you can make like round cutouts like that. For the H, let's see, we could, um, that round cutout thing might work well for the H because you could like, do something like that, or it could like taper at the bottom. It could be more like decorative with like little, um, like making little decorative swirly shapes like that. And then when like you zoom out, you know, it still looks like a J, which is kind of cool. So you could do like all the letters, um, with, with things like that. So let's say we wanted to do one that was all 
like decorative little swoopy swoops. <laughs> That's the uh, technical term for this, these block letter shapes. That's weird. I think it should be the other way. Like, uh, Oh yeah, because then the then you get that like cut out on the E, which is kind of cool. Yeah, you can get like really uh really sort of decorative and, and a little bit wild with these kind of things. You can see like how far you want to go in terms of like uh, pushing the readability. So like maybe for the uh, A, you could do something kind of wild like, like that. So really fun technique um, to play around with because there's like tons of uh, possibilities and like ways that you can do these uh, the letters. So that's the last, uh, that's the last one. Um, love bags. You said, can I do hand lettering in Illustrator? You could um, by using the like blob brush tool. Um, you could do hand lettering with the pen tool too, if you wanted to, you can do hand lettering with the mouse. Um, but yeah. Um, Drizzly, you said the live streams keep getting better and better. The sound quality is right. Uh, is night and day from where you started? Yeah. Thank you. It's definitely been a struggle. Um, but hopefully you all enjoyed this. Um, I do live streams every Friday, so make sure you stay tuned. I'm planning to do more um, like regular live streams where I do lettering of people's names. This is not normally what I do on uh, the Friday live streams, but uh, it worked out well for this one because I wanted to do ways to get started with lettering. So um, make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on because I plan to do more live streams. Uh, I will have a, a new video out on Tuesday uh, talking about this new product from Astropad, which is a combination screen protector and Apple pencil tip that they designed to work together to get the ultimate paper feel. Um, so I've been testing that out this past week, and that's what my video will be about. And I will uh, see you all very soon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Every single time, I can't find the finish button. Okay. Thanks, Jenna. Thanks, Crummy Doodles. Thanks, Linsera Illustration. Thanks, Guaxter. Thanks, Drewzilla. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Crummy Doodles. I already said that. Okay. Good talk.